Welcome to my little corner of the internet where we celebrate creativity and growth. Welcome, curious minds, to our video that explores the ins and outs of Caroline Dolhide. Caroline Dolhide, born September 5, 1998, is an American professional tennis player. She achieved a career high ranking of World No. 41 on 2 October 2023 and a doubles ranking of No. 21 in May 2022. She has won one WTA Tour and one WTA 125 doubles titles as well as 18 titles on the ITF women's circuit, 8 in singles and 10 in doubles. Her best performances on the WTA Tour came in singles when she reached the WTA 1000 final in Guadalajara and in doubles at the 2019 and the 2022 US Open events where she reached the semi-finals with Vonia King and Storm Sanders, respectively, and also at the 2021 Wimbledon Championships and the 2023 Wimbledon Championships. As a junior, Dolhide was a two-time major tournament finalist in doubles. She made her WTA Tour debut in July 2017, and won her first WTA title in doubles at the Monterey Open in Mexico in March 2021. Dolhide also won her first Grand Slam match at the 2018 French Open. She has an aggressive style of play, and possesses the ability to hit powerful ground stroke winners especially on the forehand side. Let's now shift our focus to early life and background and explore the ways in which it shapes our perspective. Dolhide grew up in the Chicago suburbs, where she began playing tennis at five years old. She has an older sister Courtney who played college tennis at UCLA, coached women's tennis at UT Austin, and became the head coach of men's and women's tennis at Georgetown in 2018. Her younger sister Stephanie also plays tennis, and has committed to West Point. Her brother Brian plays collegiate golf at Florida Atlantic University. Dolhide worked with her youth coach Tom Lockhart since the age of six. Dolhide attended Hinsdale Central High School until her sophomore year, when she moved to Florida to train with the United States Tennis Association USTA. At this point, she began working with Stephen Huss, a former Australian professional tennis player. Dolhide had verbally committed to play tennis at UCLA, but ultimately decided to forego attending college to pursue a career as a professional. Prepare yourself for an in-depth analysis of junior career in this section. In 2014, Dolhide reached the semi-finals of the girls' singles event at the US Open, despite needing to qualify for the main draw. She upset three of the top ten seeds in the tournament, including Mark de Von Druve in the first round, before losing to the eventual champion Marie Bauskov. Later that year, she also made it to the semi-finals of the Eddie Hare Championships and the quarterfinals at the Orange Bowl, two prestigious Grade 1 tournaments. This helped her rise to career-high ITF junior ranking of No. 16 in the world the following summer. Dolhide was then forced to skip the 2015 US Open and most of the remaining events that season after breaking her left foot. This injury prevented her from continuing to climb in the rankings. As a junior, Dolhide was more successful in doubles than in singles. In April 2015, she partnered with Enishi Bihar to win the USTA International Spring Championships, her only title at a Grade 1 event. The following week, the duo made it to another final at the Easter Bowl, this time losing to Sophia Kenin and Katie Swan. In the last few tournaments of her junior career, Dolhide achieved two of her best results with two Grand Slam runner-ups, the first at the 2015 French Open with partner Katerina Stewart and the second at the 2016 US Open with partner Kayla Day. Moving on to the next segment, we have first ITF titles and WTA quarterfinal, top 150. Dolhide began playing regularly on the ITF women's circuit in 2016 after missing the second half of 2015 with a broken left foot. In June, she won both the singles and doubles events at the ERC tournament in Buffalo for her first professional titles. The following year, she won two more tournaments at the ERC level, including Winnipeg in July. Later that month, Dolhide qualified for the Stanford Classic to make her WTA Tour main draw debut. 
she won her first tour level match against World No. 48, Naomi Osaka, before losing to compatriot Madison Keys in the next round. This success helped her crack the top 200 of the WTA rankings for the first time. After the US Open, Dolhide made her first WTA Tour quarterfinal at the Tournoi de Kubik to rise to a career high ranking of no. 137. Dolhide also played in the doubles event at Stanford with her junior US Open partner Kayla Day. The pair had already reached two finals and won one title on the ITF circuit in February and they continued their success together by making it to the semi-finals in their doubles debut on the WTA Tour. The two of them were also awarded a wild card into the US Open, where they upset 10th veteran doubles specialists Abigail Spears and Katerina Srebotnik in their Grand Slam debut in doubles. A few weeks later, Dolhide followed up this performance by winning a ERC title at the Abeto Tampico with veteran Mariri Goyen a victory that helped her finish the year just inside the top 100 of the WTA doubles rankings. In this section, we'll be deep diving into 2018 major and WTA 1000 debuts in singles, unraveling its complexities and uncovering valuable insights. In March 2018, Dolhide was awarded a wild card into the main draw of the Indian Wells Open, where she picked up her first two match wins at a premier mandatory tournament, including a second round victory over No. 30 Dominika Sibukov. She also pushed Simona Halep to three sets in her third round loss to the world No. 1 player. Dolhide continued her momentum into the clay court season, where she won the ERC event at Indian Harbour Beach, the biggest title of her career. She closed out the clay court season by qualifying for the French Open. In her major main draw debut in singles, Dolhide defeated Viktor Jagolovic before losing to Keys in the following match. In the next few months, she also made her debuts at Wimbledon as a lucky loser and the US Open as a direct acceptance, but lost in the opening round in both tournaments. She also received a wild card into the US Open doubles draw with Christina McHale and reached the third round. In the upcoming portion, we'll be dissecting US Open and Wimbledon semi-finals, made in WT a title and top 25 in doubles to gain a comprehensive understanding of its implications. Following the US Open, Dolhide did not win multiple main draw matches at a singles event again, until a ERC event in April 2019 where she finished runner-up to Barbara Krukov. Nonetheless, she dropped out of the top 200 since she was defending points from a ERC title. Dolhide fared better in doubles in the first half of the year, reaching two ERC finals. She finished runner-up at Bonita Springs in Florida with Asu Maiten Arcanada, before winning a title at the Surbiton Trophy with Jennifer Brady. Dolhide continued to struggle in singles and reached a year low of no. 283 in the singles rankings on 12 August 2019. Her form began to rebound in a big way after she brought back two medals from the 2019 Pan American Games in Lima, Peru. The first was a gold medal in doubles, herring with the Sioux Arcanada to make the 20-year-old duo the first American gold medalists in women's doubles at the Pan Am Games since Pam Shriver and Donna Faber in 1991 in Havana. The next day, Dolhide earned a second-place finish in singles and added a silver medal to her haul. Back in the States, Dolhide promptly won her first singles title of the year at the ERC 2019 Concord Open. She then qualified for the US Open, where she lost her only WTA Tour match of the year to no. Etienne Wang Zhang. In the doubles event, Dolhide partnered with compatriot Vonia King to produce her best result of the year. The pair reached the semi-finals, defeating the 14th team of Yabla Kitchenik and Gina Ostapenko, before losing to the eventual champions Elise Mersens and Erin Sabalenka. With this performance, Dolhide rose to no. 72 in the world in doubles. Before the end of the year, she won another ERC title at the Charleston Pro to return to the top 200 of the singles rankings. Dolhide won her maiden WTA doubles title at the 2021 Monterey Open, 
partner in Asia Muhammad where they defeated Heather Watson and Zeng Seisei in the final in straight sets. Now, let's redirect our focus towards 2022 Australian Open debut, US Open semi-finals in doubles and discover its significance in our narrative. She made her singles debut at the 2022 Australian Open and the WTA 1000 Guadalajara Open after qualifying. In doubles, she reached the quarterfinals at the Australian Open and the semi-finals at the 2022 US Open, partnering Storm Hunter. Let's now turn our gaze towards 2023, best season, maiden WTA 1000 final, top 50, Wimbledon semi-finals in doubles and explore the fascinating connections it has to offer. In 2023, Dolhide reached back-to-back -back quarterfinals at the Australian Open, partnering Anna Kalinskaya. Ranked no. 206. She reached her second tour level quarterfinal at the 2023 Monterey Open as a qualifier defeating Joel Niemeyer and Anna Karnish Meidlov and her first since Cubic City in 2017. As a result, she moved close to 40 positions up in the rankings. She reached the round of 16 at the Charleston Open defeating Sabine Lisicki and Linda Fruvertov. She lost to eventual champion Ons Jaber. She made her top 100 singles debut on 22 May 2023 at World No. 99, following winning the ERC title in Naples, Florida. She reached the semi-finals in doubles at the Wimbledon Championships with Zhang Shui where they lost to third seeds Elise Mertens and Storm Hunter. At the 2023 Guadalajara Open Akron she reached the third round of a WTA 1000 for the second time in her career. Next, she defeated 8 seed Ekaterina Alexandrova to reach her first WTA 1000 singles quarterfinal. Then she defeated Martina Trevisan and reached her first WTA semi-final in a close to three hours match. She became the 8th WTA player to reach a WTA 1000 semi-final with a ranking outside of the top 100 and the lowest ranked player at World No. 111 since Svetlana Kuznetsova at World No. 153 in Cincinnati 2019. With her win over Sophia Kenin and reaching the final, she also became the second lowest ranked finalist after Kuznetsova at a WTA 1000 level since the introduction of the format in 2009. She was also the sixth first-time finalist at WTA 1000 events in 2023 after Rybakina, Kalinina, Samsonova, Goff and Mukova, excluding the format's start in 2009, only 2018 has had more seven. As a result, she moved up close to 70 positions to a new career-high ranking in the top 45 in the rankings on 25 September 2023. At the same tournament, immediately following her singles quarterfinal match, she also reached the semi-finals with Asia Muhammad defeating Mayukato Tennis and Aldila Suchiodi in 1R. They subsequently lost to top seeds and eventual champions Elise Mertens and Storm Hunter. The spotlight now falls on playing style as we delve deeper into its details. Dolhide is an aggressive Barcelona. She is known for having a strong serve and powerful ground strokes, which she uses to hit a high number of winners. Her forehand in particular is one of her best shots and was already very advanced while she was still a teenager. Sissy Bellis faced Dolhide at the 2014 Orange Bowl when both players were still juniors and commented that Dolhide hits probably the hardest by far compared to Bellis's other opponents and said her serve is amazing. Venus Williams defeated Dolhide at the 2018 Canadian Open, but commented that she had a really great second serve. With our curiosity piqued, let's embark on a dedicated exploration of performance timelines and its fascinating intricacies. Only main draw results in WTA Tour, Grand Slam tournaments, Fed Cup e. Jean King Cup and Olympic Games are included in winless records. Now, let's redirect our focus towards singles and discover its significance in our narrative. Current through the 2023 Guadalajara Open. In this chapter, we'll be shedding light on doubles and its role in shaping our understanding. Current through the 2022 US Open. 
with our curiosity piqued, let's embark on a dedicated exploration of Singles 1-1 Loss and its fascinating intricacies. Singles 1-1 Loss Get ready for a captivating exploration as we unravel the layers of Singles 1-1 Loss and their profound significance. Singles 1-1 Loss Brace yourselves for the next chapter where we'll be dissecting doubles for one title, three runner-ups. Doubles for one title, three runner-ups. Brace yourselves for the next chapter, where we'll be dissecting doubles, one title. Doubles, one title. As we progress through this video, let's now turn our gaze towards singles, 12, eight titles for runner-ups. Singles, 12, eight titles for runner-ups. In the next portion, we'll be immersing ourselves in the realm of doubles, 13 nine titles for runner-ups and examining its broader implications. Doubles, 13 nine titles for runner-ups. Without further ado, let's move on to the topic of girls' doubles, 2-2 two -two runner-ups. Girls' doubles, 2-2 two -two runner-ups. Stay connected and join our community by subscribing and following me on other platforms.